This is the June 8th meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Notice to those in attendance, your image, telephone number, uh, and name may be recorded for posterity. Okay, I'll open the hearing for the Berlin Memorial School sign. Uh, if I may call you, Steve. Steve, are you available? Yeah, let me promote him. Oh, and, and um, Lynn, remember that I, I did verify the newspaper publications and some of the abutter notifications. Okay. Unless there is an objection on the part of any of my fellow um, members of the ZBA, there was some question about notification. The notifications that we require usually show the date that the... Um, notices were filed to the residents and a copy of the newspaper insert is usually included. We did get a bill, I believe, did we not, Leanne, for the uh, newspaper? No, I, I, got, um, I got a notification saying that it was posted. It's not a bill. It was a statement confirming that they were posted. Okay. I forwarded but, two affidavits. Yes. To Leanne. But, but, and, and Seven. then as far as the notifications go, we received the majority of them back or they were received back and they had a date that was consistent with being in a timely fashion. I suggest that we waive our usual requirement for all of them to have a date that they were mailed. They don't have to be returned, but we need a date that they were mailed. And I think it's reasonable to assume. I would just caution the petitioner. It is a, uh, something that someone could challenge in the future. Well, I mean, it, it wasn't specified that those white and green pieces had to come back with dates and information on it. When I first went to the post office, um, when we weren't going to meet the deadline, all they did was give them back to me. Nothing was signed, nothing was stamped. So when we sent them out the second time, I didn't go through that process again. I just put return addresses on the ones that we didn't get back. And the, the envelopes that were returned with the envelope of the ZBA were all dated May 13th and they were all stamped on the same day. So, I mean, if, if they're going to challenge this on a technicality. I, I am suggesting, um, Steve, that we accept what you have submitted if you're hearing me. Um, even though it is not what we usually require. Having said that, do you have a presentation for us? No, I mean, I, I put all this together on behalf of the Berlin Memorial School and John Campbell who requested this sign. I submitted all the documentation in 15 copies of what was requested by the ZBA assuming that that would be distributed. It wasn't yes. communicated to me whether it would be or wouldn't be, but on, my assumption was that it was going to be distributed, the 15 copies. Yeah, and, and you did have everywhere. an opportunity to read the instructions um, for filing with the Zoning Board of Appeals. Did you not? I did. Okay. <clears throat> so is the school the owner of the property? The town of Berlin owns the property. The Berlin Borelson Regional School District leases the building from the town of Berlin. Okay. So on our suggestion, have you had an opportunity to meet with the selectmen? No, I have not. This was the first step in the process. Well, yes, but it was suggested, and I think even from us and from... Um, the town administrator that perhaps you would want to meet with the selectmen. The email I got from the town administrator about a week ago recommended that we do not go forward with this proposal and it would still require the approval of the selectmen. I was never instructed to sit down and meet with the selectmen prior to this meeting. Okay. Well, 
I guess what I'm saying is we would not be able to reach a favorable decision unless two things were um, met and my colleagues can hop in at any time. First of all, when you're leasing property, the owner of the property needs to sign. Number two, there is some question, if I may finish. Yes, sorry. There is some question as to whether or not even the leased land um, is in fact, uh, goes to the street. It doesn't appear to in maps that are available at the town. Do you have any other map that says to the contrary? To what exactly were you that, referring that the, to? That the, even the least portion of the land does not go out to South Street. I have no lease in, in, in place when this process started, when I spoke to uh, Bob Connery, the uh, business manager said that the school district and the town of Berlin were in the process of coming up with or finalizing a lease for the property. Okay, so you do not have a proper lease on the property either. The Berlin Borson Regional School District at that time, two months ago, did not have a lease as it was my understanding with Bob okay. Connery and he was finalizing that with the town of Berlin. Does Boylston have one? Uh, it's, we're not talking about Boylston. I understand that, but I just wondered why, you know, you might have with one and not the other. That would be a discussion with uh, the business manager. Okay. So again, any of my colleagues can pipe in, but as of right now, we have no evidence that you even have a legitimate lease on that property. That was stated clearly in my application. Okay. Um, and that the uh, land belongs to the town of Berlin under the jurisdiction of the Board of Selectmen. So I would suggest to you that you might want to go see them before we close this hearing. Does anyone else have any other questions or comments on these facts on the board? How do you feel about what I'm saying, folks? I don't want to be um, the sole perpetrator of this. I mean, Lynn, I'm just going through the process as I was asked to go through with the zoning board and the building inspector. Right. And, and these were the first steps that I was told I needed to take was to fill out the applica application and go before the zoning board. There is a place on the application and in the instructions for the owner of the property to sign. Did and the, select, did the, the select town person. administrator sign that document on behalf, Margaret signed that, signed that document on behalf of the town of Berlin. May I interrupt just for a moment? Um, sure. Margaret is in attendance. Do we wanna promote her? Well, I, I think that um, that would be up to Margaret if she wants to chide in, but- She has raised her hand. Okay. Leanne, would you like me to promote or are you going to- Yeah, could you please? Sure. Oh, okay, there we go. Hi everyone. Hello. Hi, Margaret. Um, please forgive my uh, my evening look here. So, I have I, I have a, I do have a couple of a couple of comments. Um, first of all, Steve is correct. Um, I did sign on behalf of Berlin for him to submit the application to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, he had they had long missed um, the deadline to actually file an appeal on the Building Commissioner's decision, as you know. Um, to the point of, of Boylston and their lease agreement, um, the last I communicated with the town administra administrator in Boylston, they did not yet have a lease agreement either. And I actually shared our draft with them. So um, to my knowledge, they still only have a draft as well. Well, just so we're clear, Margaret, I did not receive the building inspector's letter 
until 35 days after it was dated. Hmm. So was was yeah. it was it mailed to you or emailed to you? It was mailed to a completely wrong address, something in Bolton, Mass. I reached out to him and asked him where it was, and I didn't receive it till about 10 days after um, 30 days past August 16th. Okay, well, I'm Nothing sorry for that confusion. Us dragging our feet, I got it 35 to 40 days after it was dated. Okay. That needs to be made perfectly clear. Okay. Did you have any other comments, Margaret? The only other comment I have is regarding a sketch that, or, or a drawing that was done at the time the school was constructed, which is what we plan to use for the lease agreement when that comes. And, and it is, it, uh, based on what's been discussed, um, it is correct, uh, based on those bounds on that drawing, um, that the leased land would not be to the road. It really is only a perimeter around the school building and certain grounds. Um, my understanding is that the town clerk provided that drawing to the select board, um, the superintendent and the school principal at the time the school was built. And Thank you, Margaret. Please stay, please stay on board. Um, Steve, if I may call you Steve. That's fine. Uh, um, do you think it would be wise, being that the land that you're looking to put the sign on is within the jurisdiction of the town of Berlin and not the school district, for you to have an opportunity to meet with the selectmen before we do any vote? Well, uh, again, my understanding was this was step one that the zoning board either approves or doesn't approve the changes in the bylaws for an LED sign. So if you're telling me that meeting with the selectmen is step one, then that's what I'll do. Okay. Margaret, could you arrange that before our next meeting or? I could. I actually had a conversation today with John Campbell about that, and I'd be happy to arrange that. Would you be willing to attend, Steve? Well, yes, but do I have to go through the same process again? Um, no. Mailing out. Let me explain to you what the option would be as far as I'm concerned, as long as none of my colleagues disagree. And that would be. At your request, we could continue the hearing till I think it's July 13th. Is that true, Leanne? Yes, July 13th is the next meeting. 15th or 13th? 13th. 13th, okay. And at your request, we could continue the hearing until July 13th, which would give, afford you an opportunity to meet with the selectmen between now and then and have their recommendation come to the board. Well, that's fine, but I don't know where John Campbell is in this process. I mean, I've done all my due diligence to put all this together for him because this is a sign that he wants to put up for the Berlin Memorial School. Lenny, interrupt needs again. To be part of this process. Okay, excuse me, Susanna. Yes, I, there is a John C with his hand raised in the attendees. That could be a John Campbell. Okay, let's promote him and find out. Okay. 15 minutes later. I see a paw. Hmm. There you go. It is the right John Campbell. <laughs> Hi, John. Hi, Lynn. Thank you so much for. You think after the thousand Zoom meetings I've been to, I've learned to put my last name on these things. So I apologize for the confusion. Thanks, T, for, for uh, kind of leading the way a little bit. Let me just kind of recap, just we're all on the same page about how we got here. About two years ago, a big storm blew down the sign that had been in front of the school, I think since it was built, 
It was the old fashioned kind with the letters that you had to slide in. Uh, it was one of my many jobs to update the sign every year. And when it blew down, as sad as we were to lose that little piece of history, we thought, boy, I, an electric sign that would be more flexible and we could put more on would be a nice upgrade for the school. And that's kind of, it's one of those things. That's kind of how it got started. Um, Steve was very good about going out and soliciting some information and finding out what would be involved and how much it would cost. Um, and we moved on from there. We weren't especially attentive to the process um, until kind of late in the game. So there were two things that happened. One is what we're here talking about, which is there are several bylaws that we need help with um, because the sign doesn't meet any of those requirements. Uh, and the other one, which uh, Margaret and I were talking about earlier, we don't own the land. The old sign was on town property where we want to place the new sign is on town property. So uh, when you're right, I, you know, probably it's silly for us to go through a lot of stuff as a selectman and just going to say, nope, that's our grass. Um, and we can start there. And Steve, I'd be happy to go to meet with the selectman around this. It's not a technical thing. It's we know why we want it where we want it. It's basically proximity to power. Um, so we can move forward in that way. I think I would be very grateful if we could continue this to July. I'm happy to make that time in my schedule as well um, to kind of meet with this committee again. Um, our goal was, and Margaret and I were talking about this, you know, we're so grateful to be such an important part of, you know, Berlin. It's uh, the school is the center for so much and there's so much traffic there every day. We thought a sign that was more flexible that could communicate more would be something the whole town could use. The library could post there, the town offices could post there, town meeting could be noted, those types of things. So our, our goal is to be a little more part of our community. Um, and, and we'll work through the process. You know, and if, and if we can work it out, that's great. But as I was saying to Margaret, we value our relationship with the town more than any one piece of equipment. So we will uh, if you kind of can guide us through the steps a little bit, you know, don't let me mess up. Um, we'll go to the select band. I, I think they'll be okay with it, but you know, they're officials with their own ideas. And then we will come back to you and we can have a conversation about concerns, some of which I, I understand just having been around for, it's going on 10 years now, that I'm the principal there. Um, light pollution is, I know, a big one. And then we have some, some answers for some of those things. Um, and I, I think um, the decision of the selectman as owner of the property would weigh very heavily with this board. Um, so, Steve, are you willing to request that we continue the hearing until July 13th? What time do we have available, Leanne? Do you know? Um, we have, right now we have one hearing um, at 7 o'clock. Okay, and that's probably going to go at least an hour, maybe, mm -hmm. if that's the one down off of River Road. And... Correct. Okay, um, so would 8 o'clock on the 13th work for both you, Steve, and um, John? It certainly works for me, yeah. Steve? What day of the week is that? It's a Wednesday. It's the second Wednesday of the month. Yeah, it should. Okay. Are you making that request, Steve, because you're the petitioner? Am I making the request to continue this until July 13th? Correct. Then yes. Do I have to do that in writing or is that part of the meeting minutes? Well, you sometime between now and the next couple of weeks, you'd need to go in and, and sign a paper extending the time. Okay, because um, it's at your request. I can email that out to Steve on Monday. Yeah, um, Leanne is in the office Monday, Monday from Wednesday, 8, to, eight one, to 1 and Wednesday from 8 to 1. Um, um, would Madam one Chair, if I may, before we go down this road, um, I don't want to have somebody chasing us for no good reason here. The, the question is, um, this is being proposed as a, a sign that's based on LEDs. The town bylaw does not permit a sign based on LEDs. 
does this board have the authority to buy to waiver the town bylaw? Um, my understanding is that according to the building commissioner, and we can only go by his letter, that um, that may be possible. It may be possible? Right. We can do variances to the bylaw for dimension, those sorts of things. We cannot do zoning changes. My understanding is the only thing we cannot do is if you're in a residential area, we can't give you a commercial uh, change, but we can do dimensional um, and other changes to the bylaw in the form of variances. We need to go on what the building commissioner has given us and that's what he's given us. So Jim, thank you so much for, for asking that question. So my concern is now, I mean, everyone on the, uh, the zoning board, I'm assuming has seen all the paperwork, has seen the dimensions of the sign, understands, you know, it, it's built and its character and, and the only thing that's lit on it are the letters on the sign. So are we gonna go through this process with the selectmen and have them say, yeah, that's fine. But then the zoning board is gonna say, no, we don't wanna change that bylaw. So are we putting the cart in front of the horse or the horse in front of the cart right now. I mean, I'm assuming where you've all seen what we're proposing, you're either in favor of it or you're not in favor of it. Um, I don't think anyone comes into this meeting predisposed one way or the other. We are here to hear evidence. And I think the fact that it has come up that there is no lease on that property um, to the district, that there, the land, even if there is a lease, appears to belong to the town of Berlin, and that the sign would be placed on the town of Berlin um, land. I think that their input would be critical to us making a decision. I don't know that we could make a decision without their input. Because they are the, the, you know, you are the petitioner. But, well, if you want to go to, strictly by law, you have no standing, okay? Not leasing nor owning the property. There really is no standing, okay? But you are our school. And what we're trying to do is to find a way to resolve the issue of your sign um, without the rudimentary elements, so it would be my suggestion that going to the selectmen, because that sign can never go up without their approval, regardless of what we do, um, that you meet with them because you would have an opportunity between now and July 13th. And then um, I can only tell you, uh, I can't, not how the board would vote, but I would say what comes from the board of selectmen would be weighted heavily. I have another question. Okay. <laughs> um, and this is kind of both for Margaret, Margaret and for John. Um, I guess the, the question here is, what is the school? Um, and the reason I ask this is because we're discussing inst installation of a sign. In the town's bylaw says in it that for the purposes of this section, the term sign shall not include the following. And the first exception is signs erected or posted and maintained for public safety and welfare or pursuant to any governmental function, law, bylaw, or other regulation. Correct. So is this, is this sign being erected to serve a governmental function? I understand your questioning and I understand that portion of the bylaw. The concern is the piece of land that the sign would go on is town property under the jurisdiction of the selectmen. Yeah, okay, why is that relevant to my question? 
I, I don't understand. Because the selectmen are not really requesting this sign. They're allowing, according to Margaret, it's allowing them to file, given the letter that. from, okay. Understood. Okay. But it's, it, the, the question is, if it's a governmental function that this it, sign it, serves. It may be that the selectmen determine that they have sole priority over it. Yes, you're right. I've read that. And it, it, if that's the case, if the selectman determines that it's actually their sign or that the sign serves a governmental function on then, their property, then this entire bylaw doesn't matter and it all kind of goes away. It is possible that the selectman could say that um, we've determined that, you know, the sign is fine. We're going with the sign. They need to be three feet smaller or whatever they need to be. And they may invoke that chapter, okay? But we can't, it, and should that happen, they may turn around and say, cancel the hearing. Lynn, I just wanna to bring to your attention, there's a Mary Reddington that has her hand raised in the audience. Could someone promote her? I can do that. Hey, Mary, you've been promoted. You have to turn your mic on. Hi there, sorry, I, I'm in a butter and that's the reason I'm here. And I'm just, um, obviously I wasn't one of the 15 people that got all the information from Steve and the, I got the letter in the mail registered and it basically just said that there was an appeal and I had heard that it was a lit sign, so I'm wondering what my rights are as an abutter, or are they not uh, important if it's owned by the town? I think Margaret and I would both say, and the board members would all say, that the abutters rule. You're the ones well, that have to live with these things, so, you know, your input mm -hmm. is important. It isn't conclusive, but it is important. And what, okay. my, what I would suggest is if you leave your email address, um, I don't know, uh, Margaret, do you have to post this if you have a meeting? Um, the select board meeting does have to be posted. This wouldn't be posted as a hearing, so oh, it just okay. requires the 48 hours notice. I would suggest, Mary, that you call... Um, Mary Arada. Yeah, at 2442 and ask her that when this is on the agenda that she give you a call or send you an email or something and let you know about it and you can discuss it with your uh, neighbors if you choose. Okay, great. That's all I needed, thank you. And we sent out a list of uh, 33 abutters <clears throat> for this issue. And there are probably only six on that list that would actually be able to see that sign from their house. Okay. I think that, you know, both the selectmen and this board would take that into account. Does anybody have anything else that they'd like to ask or questions? Well, where are they going to get the power for this thing? Or is it battery operated? There's two poles either side of the driveway that leads to the school, which are uh, supported by NSTAR. So we would have to work with NSTAR to have them bring down a dedicated 120 line with a panel with a meter and two breakers, one for the sign and one for an outlet. Same thing we did in Borussia at Tahanto. I mean, if anyone has any concerns about you know, this sign, I mean, it's not lit up. It doesn't have any lights on it. It's just the LED signs. Drive by Tahanto. That sign has been up for two years, and it's going to be the exact same size sign, same shape. Instead is it of a, steady or is it rolling? It, the one green, in Tahanto was instead steady. Of a, right? Excuse me, Lynn. Instead of a green stag, it's got a blue, uh, blue jay, and it's depending on what is programmed. It's either a, a steady sign or it, uh, like you said, it, it rolls. 
and this sign is not going to face the street. It's double sided. So it will actually face up and down South Street. So any illumination from this sign will not be projected directly on any of the residences across the street. And again, it's just the LED letters on the signs. Does anyone have anything else from the board members? If not, and it's your wish, um, Steve, that we continue to the 13th at eight yes. o'clock. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, would someone care to make that motion? So moved. Was that Jim? Yep. Is there a second, please? I'll second it. Okay, that's Denny Bartlett. I'm just repeating names because we are on um, webinar. Okay, I'm gonna do a roll call vote. Uh, Pat? Aye. Susanna? Aye. Jim? Aye. Denny? Aye. Jenny? Aye. And Keith? Aye. Okay, mm -hmm. so I take it that we will see you next July 13th at 8 o'clock unless um, the situation is resolved at the Board of Selectmen's level. And thank you for coming on, John. Okay, I'll entertain a motion while we have the motion to move it. So the hearing is closed. Steve, John, um, you're welcome to stay and listen to the rest of our um, program, but um, otherwise, um, we'll see you on the 13th. Okay, I think we're past time for the next hearing. Um, yes, it's now 7.33. And this is 272 West Street? Correct. Okay, I'll open the hearing for 272 West Street. Is the petitioner available? He is. Yes, I'm promoting him now. It's a continuation, right? Yes. He should be coming up. Okay, Douglas is on. Hello, can you guys hear me? We can hear you. Hi there. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing good, so. Do you have any new information for us? Uh, I did submit like a three new paperwork to the board, but I uh, last meeting was request, I had a, you guys request like the engineer, like, you know, to have a letter and all that. And I did work with the engineer a little bit with the architect as well. But uh, unfortunately, like uh, when we had the meeting, he got COVID. So it's been two uh, weeks that he is in recovery. So we could not like, you know, meet and, and you know, kind of uh, finalize. To see. Yes. So from what he says, it's like the construction is like an you know, open field. You have like many possibilities, you know, but depends how much those possibilities will cost. So, and I mentioned to him, Chris, I just kind of like need some possibilities and price for the cost for those possibilities. So, and then we, we have any scheduled, uh, we have, we had like, you know, a meeting schedule, but unfortunately we could not meet because of COVID situation. So three things that I have for tonight, which is, I want to make, talk a little bit about the documents that I sent to you guys. That would be okay, the first one. So I sent you guys like, you know, an image that I found on the town website, you know, uh, that's like a G, I think it's GIS map. That's what I think it is. So, and I put it over there three inches on regular ruler. This one right here, like, you know, just a regular ruler. So anyone has that on your desk. And also on that plan, I did a scale because what the engineer was explained to me, he said there was basically like all the information you ask me, it's already on the scale of the plan. So. I don't know if I do have Mr. Hanks with us today. 
do I? I don't think he's in attendance right now. Okay, it's all right. I just he, was said, he said he'd come later. I think tonight, if he was able to come. So basically, like uh, everything that we had talk on the previous three meetings, everything that I mentioned to you guys, it's all proven on the scale of the plan, which was done by Brandon Consulting. So I just want to mention that the scale is like one inch on the plan. Um, it's about 40 feet on the ground. So I just did like a little breakdown, which is like, you know, half an inch is about 20 feet on the ground. Uh, quarter an inch is about 10 feet on the ground. One eighth of an inch on the plan means about like five feet on the ground. So with those dimensions, anyone can see that everything that I said here, it's basically truth. And you guys can calculate that with a simple ruler. So that's one thing. In case we have any new people in the audience, um, in your district, which is commercial village, I believe, mm -hmm. um, you're required to keep a 30 foot side lot. Um, yes. And you're looking for what, 24 and a half? Yes, I need actually like, um, I need four feet and six inches. Okay. Extra off the setback. Yeah, so, it's not a lot setback. And we also heard um, from the building inspector before that if you were one house over, um, you would only have to have a 20 foot side lot. Yes. If you were in a residential agricultural um, or area. Or if it was the old le legislation as well. And um, you also presented, I think, two letters from a butters or folks living near you, right? Yes, I did. Okay. Does um, anybody? So, uh, the second thing I was wanted to mention was the scale of the plans. So you guys can check it out. Uh, the other thing, it's like I want to mention to Miss Roberts. It's like she requests about shifting the building. You can check on the plan that if I shifted the building, and the other L of the addition will be also getting into the setback as well. Also, uh, just to clarify that, Mr. Roberts, if I, to shift the building in a way that the building is complete out of the setback, I need to shift the building a feet according to this plan. So, and that's basically impossible, but I just, I mean, without, you know, um, without moving the surge line. Also, I want to just let like uh, Mr. Royer, like to move the building back, um, to be complete, completely out of the setback, I need to move back about 15 feet, according to the plans. And if I do move 12 feet and a half, I'm already inside of the buffer zone. So just those things that I want to mention to you guys. And the third, I want to request the board uh, to have an extension of another 30 days. So hopefully I can meet with the engineer and the architect and bring you guys more info if you guys need more information. All right, well, let's go to the uh, rest of the board. Does anyone have any questions of the petitioner? Um, do they still want to hear from the engineer? Are they satisfied with the responses and the plans that the petitioner has given us? I know you had some questions, Susanna, before. How do you feel? Do you feel your if they've been resolved or? I I do, and um, having learned about the difference in realizing it was in the commercial village, I think the only um, question I would have was that there were it would be used residential only and nothing that would fall under commercial village. I don't know if that- We had already asked- the, Yes. We had already asked the petitioner because we knew that he was um, in construction or landscaping. And he gave us two addresses where he has his office and where he stores his equipment. Am I not correct? Douglas? Yes. I mean, yes, you are correct. So the, the, the place will not be used as a commercial or business operating or anything like that. That's just residential. Okay. And you have no qualms about us putting that 
uh, right? Not that we need to because it's a given, but you have no qualms about that being written into the decision if the decision is in fact in fa your favor, correct? I do not have any problems with that. Anyone else? Jim, do you have anything? I know you um, had some questions. Yeah, not at the moment. Um, How do you feel about um, what the petitioner has come back with? I don't know, <laughs> to be quite honest. Um, yeah. he's, he's saying it's 12 and a half feet. This is, it would be the distance from what he could go back before he hits the buffer. Um, I mean, it, I don't know. So are you saying you want to hear from an engineer? Um, yeah, I think I'd like to hear what the engineer has to say. Anybody else? Yes, Jenny. I, uh, I know he spoke at one time that his trucks would not be parked in his yard. And I've been by there two or three, four times last week or so, and he's got trucks and trailer in there. Do you care to address that? Yes. Uh... It's because I still like doing work in my house. So, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm a landscape owner, right? So, I, and then I was like doing my, some plantings. I got some blueberries installed. Uh, I can send you guys a picture of my daughter installing my, her first tree, which was a macon apple. So, and sometimes the, the facility where I have my garage, uh, it, they close the gates as, at like 9 p.m. So it caused that we had like some situations this last week. And I drove home with the truck and the trail, but my driveway is like really big. So, uh, of course, when I have the garage built and everything won't fit my truck and trailer. But I mean, sometimes you might see my truck and trailer here because I'm doing work on my own land. So, have you seen them any other time, Jenny? Other quite, than often, quite often on the weekends and during the first of the week, mm -hmm. uh, back in there. Mm -hmm. I've I mean, seen, I've never seen anything with any equipment on the trailer if you guys drive by today you're gonna see my trailer here because i could not drop it off because i had the meeting so i drove straight here but i mean that's i mean i can send you guys about seven years of uh ledge paperwork that proves that i do pay storage for seven years and i'm okay. at the facility for seven years so i'm not planning to use as a Let, let's, let's, do two, let's do two things first of all would you give us the address of where the majority of your equipment is stored. Uh, yes, so that's 800 Bolton Road in Marlboro, Mass. The place called Smart Storage. You can call them. They will, I mean, present any paperwork you guys need to know. No, and and where else? Where was your office? My office is, is at two, uh, 245 Boston Coast Road East. Marlboro Mass, Unit 1. And you can go to the Massachusetts Corporation database and check that as well. It's been seven years that I got that on that address since I started the business. Thank you. Are you still uncomfortable, Denny? Well, I think the bylaw is kind of so it's not parked overnight in these areas? i uh, just like to mention that uh, I do can have like one truck and one train in, um, back in those residential commercial areas. I cannot have more than one truck and one trailer. But I mean, I'm just mentioned that, but I, I'm not using it as that. But of course- Are you I saying mean, because you're in a commercial village district? Yes. I can park one truck and one trailer here, like, you know, totally legal. But that's not my plan. As I'm saying to you guys, I'm just saying, like, if I need, but I mean, if you just, my truck's about, like, you know, uh, 16 feet, my trailer's another 20 feet. So if you calculate, after I put the garage in, there is no, no way to park, like, you know, there is no even possibility to put a trailer here. You know what I mean? But, of course, I'll be back on the side of the street when I'm doing, like, work in my house, because I do all my maintenance myself. 
And my guys, they come by like, and they park on the street. I mean, there is a little street like ahead on the right. That's when they park when they stop by to mow my lawn. So, but I, to be honest with you guys, I'm not intent to use the property as, I mean, to run my business or anything like that, you know. If I would, I mean, it also doesn't fit. I got like, I got three trucks, I got four trailers, and I got like, you know, a whole bunch of equipment. So, I mean, it doesn't fit here, so. Okay, I think we have one of two choices to make. Either we feel prepared to make a decision or we want more information from the engineer. So let me go around and ask each person on the board um, how they feel. Pat, do you think we need more information? I'm fine. I'm fine, Lynn. Okay, Pat's okay. Um, what about uh, Denny? I'm pretty comfortable the way it is now. But so, I would so still, you're saying you don't need more information, is that correct? I, I, would, I would really like to see the engineer's drawing. All right, well, that, that's different. So you want to see the engineer. So you're mm -hmm. not an okay, you're an engineer, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, Keith? I'm okay. Okay, so Keith is okay the way it is. Um, Ginny? I'm an engineer. Okay. Um, and Susanna? I'm okay. Uh, and where's Jim? There's Jim. Okay. <laughs> Jim would like to hear from the engineer. Okay. All right. The reason I went around and did this, Douglas, is because um, you need the fur variance. I believe you need uh, four positive votes out of five. And I see that three of the folks that are present um, are not um, prepared without the engineering report. Okay. So, to be honest with you, I, I would prefer if you guys can give me another 30 days. So I can have everything in order. And you guys have paperwork, you know, so you guys can file as well. So are you requesting a 30-day extension? I mean, for yes. Till, till July 13th? Yeah. And that we've already got a 7 o'clock and an 8 o'clock, do we not? That is correct. Um, let's go for 8.30. I don't want to put it out too much further. I have a feeling one of them may not happen. Um, so July 13th at um, 8.30 p.m. is the request of the petitioner. Would someone care to make that motion? So moved. Okay, Jim, Jim moved it. And uh, Ginny seconded it. Okay, I'll go around for a roll call vote. Pat? Yes. Uh, Danny. Aye. Jim. Aye. Susanna. Aye. Ginny. Aye. Okay, so we'll see you again at 8.30 on July 13th, and we thank you for your patience. My pleasure, and thank you, guys. See you. Right. See you next month. Okay, so... Our last endeavor this evening is not until eight o'clock, right? It's not till eight thirty. Oh, great! How did we do All that? Right. We ha we have well, because we thought ten Bigelow was going to be continued until tonight, but then they requested till July. Okay. July. But we had already voted for the next one to be scheduled at eight thirty, anticipating Bigelow would be before it. Oh. So we can do administrative stuff while we're... Right, how about the minutes? There was two sets, remember we met twice last month. So there's um, May 11th and May 12th. And I sent out my, late, my latest and greatest on Monday. So that was the most up-to-date. Okay, unless there's objection, 
I'll call for a motion to do them together. Um, does anyone want to make a motion for May 11th and 12th? I would make a motion that we approve both sets of meeting minutes as presented uh, in the Monday distribution. Second. Second. And uh, Denny second it. Okay, I'll do a roll call vote. Pat. Yay. Denny. Aye. Jenny. Aye. Jim. Aye. Susanna. Aye. Okay, so we're a hundred percent on that. Uh, Denny, do you have something to bring to the board? Nothing. Um, uh, I, I did the. Yeah, you processed money, something for us, right? Yeah, money returned for the people that wanted the construction yard at the mall. Okay. I haven't heard anything. There's no one uh, from the, oh, um, Jay is on uh, there. Could we ask Jay if? Um, Jay has left, but um, Carolyn McDonald is on planning board and she's still on. Yeah, okay. Could you, uh, unless she objects, could you promote her? Raise your hand, Carolyn, if that's okay. Oh, yeah. She raised her hand. All right. Carolyn's on her way up. Thank you. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, so you I want a progress report about the construction yard? Please. Um, they, they are... We've had an informal meeting with them and we have a hearing scheduled for the 28th of this month. So that's, that's about it. Um, they seem pretty determined to still move forward, so. Okay then, well, good luck. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. And thank you for reporting to us. So on the 28th, they're on the agenda for a hearing. Yes. Uh, Do we have any, any other business? I know I'm negligent. I haven't done my ethics, which was due in May. I've got to mm. do that. Jenny, you would do too. Have you done yours? I did mine. Oh, you're a good guy. I need a copy of your um, certificate, Denny, for the rec files. Oh, all right. Yeah, you should send one to the town clerk, too. I did, I did that already. Okay, well, then maybe you could ask her to, or you could just forward the same note. I hand delivered it. Oh, okay. All right, I, I, I can try it down. Okay, thank you, Leanne. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to share? Or would you like to take a break for 15 minutes? It's uh, half an hour we have to take a break. I, I, I realize, yeah. Yeah, I, I can stop. I can pause the recording and, until 8.30. Okay. Um, I'll entertain a motion that we um, pause the meetings until 8.30 when our next petitioner is due. Is there a motion? So moved. Okay, that's Ginny. Yep. Is there a second? Second. Um, that's Pat. Yeah. I'll go around for a roll call. Pat. Yes. Jenny. Hi. Jim. Hi. Susanna. Hi. Ginny. Hi. And Keith. Aye. Who's very pensive. All right, I'm pausing the recording. Okay, see you in half an hour. And I will promote the petitioner.
And it is now 8.30. We're waiting for Ginny to come back. And select board member Chris Keith is back in the in attendance. Lynn, thank you. FYI, Jenny's really enjoying her little break. She's not coming back. Ran away. That's okay. I bet Pat is texting her. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't, but you want me to? Hmm. Well, I just sent her a text. Let's hope she took her phone with her. Yeah. Nope, there's her phone. <laughs> and there's Jenny. Hello. Oh, that was me, Jenny. Oh, hi. Okay. I think we're all here, so we'll resume our meeting. And I'll open the hearing for 3234 Autumn Ridge. Um, I see the petitioner is here. Um, Mr. Ryan, do you wish to speak to us? Um, yes, I guess uh, Richard, I don't think is at the meeting tonight. Um, we did go over all the measurements. We did come to, um, I believe I, I tried to send in the uh, sketch and everything of a possibility of 252 square feet, I think it was, of additional living space for a little rec room area in the basement near the uh, walk outdoors. And that will keep you within the 35%. I think he sent that to us, did he not, Leanne? He did, yes, he sent a letter with, um, with that information. That you could finish off 252 feet in the basement and still be within the 35% uh, percent square feet. And I even asked him, in other words, we're still under the old, you know, eliminate hallways, eliminate doorways, that sort of stuff. 
um, there will be a new bylaw and asked him, and he said either way he did it, it came out very close to the same, right, Leanne, because you were that, there. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So, Mr. Ryan, um, who lives in that um, in-law apartment? That would be my sister-in-law, who's my uh, secondary caregiver, and her two children. All three of whom would be related to you? Yes. Because I don't think it says by blood. I think it just says related. Does it not in the bylaw, folks? Well, it's by my wife's blood. <laughs> and she, li and she lives here, too. <laughs> yeah, she's my primary caregiver, which lives in, in the home with me at the 34 address. Okay. Anyone have any questions of Mr. Ryan? Just curious. Um, the age of the uh, children of your sister-in-law? Uh, I believe age nine, give or take a birthday. I'm pretty sure nine and um, age two. And the nine-year-old goes to the Berlin school system? No, um, goes to private school. Both both uh, actually go to private schools. Oh, okay. And you understand that occupancy of the in-law apartment is limited to no more than three people. Yes. And that, and that includes little people, right? Yes. Um, and we've seen the outside appearance of the premises is that of a single family residence. Um, I'm just looking for anything else that uh, is required in the bylaw. I think that pretty well covers it. It's the 35% and it has to be someone blood related to you that lives there. Does anybody have any other questions that they'd like to ask? I just have a comment. I read uh, Richard Hanks's letter. And his last sentence is, therefore, there's no requirement for a variance. Because right. He just needs the permit for the in-law apartment. Right. So I think it's kind of out of our hands now. Well, well, we have to do the permit. We have yeah. to do the in-law yeah. permit because that when they actually passed the bylaw, they gave everyone who had an in-law apartment five years to comply. And so even though the in-law apartment did not require a special permit at, at the time that the house was constructed within five years a permit was required and it's been five years okay uh lynn just to make you aware the building commissioner richard is now in attendance if you need him thank you does anyone have any questions of our building commissioner uh i have one question for mr ryan can we just confirm the number of bedrooms please the number of bedrooms in the in-law suite is three. Thank you. And I'm sure that, you know, um, anything that we do is subject to Board of Health regulation, et cetera, et cetera. And you're comfortable with that, correct, Mr. Ryan? Yes. I was under the impression from Mr. Hanks the, the reason I had to go in front of this board first off was, is my special permit was going to run out because it was given the first time, the next time you had to actually apply. And then therefore, since I'm gonna continue to use it as an in-law suite, I had to actually get the special permit in place. And that is correct as far as we're concerned too. 
So you only applied for a special permit, right? Correct. In, in the case of our measurements from what we had listed as far as assessors was it looked like we would be out of compliance, but when we actually measure within the guidelines of the special permit, we came up with the correct information then. So at first we were under the impression that we may not even be able to do any kind of additional um, finishing of square footage. So to make sure we, we came in front of this board to get the permit and also in case it wasn't in the thing, see if I could get special approval, but we came to the other conclusion. Well, I'd on behalf of um, our board, I'd like to thank our building commissioner for going the extra mile because I'm sure this consumes some time of his and we appreciate his efforts to in investigate on our behalf. Does anybody have any questions? We have someone in the audience with their hand up. Uh, two people actually, and I believe nope. They are both residents of the same address. Okay, we had, I'm assuming because I see a hand from Mr. Skiles. Um, hmm. Could you promote the other person who has their hand raised? And in the meantime, Mr. Skiles, if you unmute, um, we'd be glad to hear from you. Oh, where'd they go? They yes, both- I promoted them. You did? I moved them up, yeah. Where'd they go? They should be joining the, they should be coming on. Okay. Mr. Skiles, if you'd like to unmute, you could um, speak with us or tell us whatever it is you'd like to say. Uh, uh, yes, uh, so the, uh, uh, just some simple questions. Uh, I thought that the uh, square foot, the percentage was actually 33%. Am I incorrect on that? The bylaw says 35. It does. I thought I had it as 33. Uh, then uh, the other question is, who actually made, uh, did these measurements? The I, uh, what I'm referring to, I would like an unbiased measurement. And... It was our building commissioner. Oh, it was the building commissioner. Okay. And uh, the next question is, uh, which I brought up at the uh, previous meeting, is uh, the square footage, I would think, was unless there was renovations done on both uh, units, uh, the square footage should actually be in the deed. Uh, I, I'm not look, asking to look for at the deed. Um, that's not my business. But the, in the deed, it should have the four plans of both units and the square footage. Uh, we are uh, next door to Mr. Ryan. We're at 30 Autumn Ridge. Uh, the other person on the uh, video uh, on the Zoom conference is Nina Canella. That's actually my wife. Uh, so we're next door uh, uh, to the this property. And uh, as the houses were being built, uh, uh, we've actually gone through almost every house in this community uh, as it was being built by uh, Mark Rhodes and uh, Chuck Black. Uh, plus, uh, Mark Rhodes, uh, actually, he's the one that actually built the 32 and 34, which uh, I and my wife have gone through. He should actually have the square footage of the originally built uh, uh, property. And the other question is, uh, has the board, there was some confusion, as I recall. Uh, 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 Mr. Ryan had uh, asked for permission to originally uh, do some construction or renovation on uh, 34 Autumn Ridge, which is the main house, which is incorrect. And I think uh, Lynn Ryan may have sent a note. Uh, so I want to make sure that the board has approved anything already by, uh, by mistake, because it's 30, uh, 32 we're talking about, not 34. So the document I have here is uh, Mr. Ryan put down number 34. And uh, the other question is, uh, again, I have uh, how many people are living in the unit? And uh, 
Uh, that's pretty much it. And I'll just say that the that the unit, the, the guest house of in law suite is only about 10, 15 feet from our property line. Okay, so uh, you know I'm concerned about the the traffic and the parking, etc. Uh, first, I've sent the board to to uh, various letters because I was initially under under in the understanding that this was a uh, for an elderly in law. Now all of a sudden at this meeting it has changed for a sister in law and two children. Uh, so I want to be uh, make sure about that. And uh, and uh, I've had one other question, uh, one other concern. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it, you know if that's true, then I'm not the, some of the what I wrote in the letter about why yeah, does an elderly need a gym in the basement? Why do they need a wine cellar in the basement? This and that uh, that may be irrelevant if uh, it's now all of a sudden changed. And also some of my concern from the previous meeting, uh, Mr. Ryan kept saying it's huge, it's huge, it's huge. Those are his words. And then one of the board members asked him, uh, I, forget who, uh, she said, I, I forget who asked, said, so you want to make it larger? And there was no answer. The, the impression from the original, the previous meeting was the intendancy is to perhaps make this a, a single home dwelling, which it goes against the bylaws. Wow. The, the, the board actually said, if you want to do that, take out the kitchen. Well, uh, I believe that Mr. Ryan asked what his solution would be. Yes. And I think we told him you either have to meet the 35% in-law requirement or you have to remove the kitchen and make it one dwelling unit. That would be the only solution because we do not allow multiple family dwellings. But I see that Rich Hanks is here and being that he did the investigation um, as to what the square footage is and what was going to be allowed. Um, if he wouldn't mind, would you care to speak to that, Mr. Hanks? Yes, absolutely. Can you hear me okay? You're kind of um, soft, but. How about now? Let me get a little closer. A little better. A little better, okay, I'll try and get rid of close. So yes, uh, to, to Mr. Um, Skiles' uh, concerns and questions, yes, uh, last meeting, uh, Mr. Ryan did say that, you know, the, the, the house is huge, the apartment is huge, but it comes down to the fact of what, what did it actually measure up to. So he was relying on the information of what the assessor's card had, which pretty much just, they, they, they measured the exterior of the house and they just multiplied by number of floors. They didn't minus off the garage space and stuff like that. So when uh, Mr. Ryan and I mentioned it out, we, we calculated it out and, and he, he's under the, the threshold of the 35%. Um, as far as it being within 10 feet of your property line, I, I don't believe that's the case. It, it's conforming and met the setback requirement to a side yard setback when the house was built. So. Nothing's been added on to the house, so, so it's not any closer to your house than it was in the past. Um, I don't know, what, what was it? Any other, any questions, other questions on that? Mr. Skiles, did you have anything else you'd like to ask of the building commissioner? Uh, I know, the issue was, yes, I realized that the, uh, the, uh, the, the in-law suite was built 10, 20 years, 10, 12 years ago or so. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not talking about concerning any how close it is to the property. There's nothing that can be done there. I'm just, uh, my point was that uh, with more people leave, living there, it leads to less, uh, less uh, privacy, uh, uh, more traffic. You're going to have more traffic. There's always seems to be trucks and cars coming and going from the, the 34, 32 and 34. And, uh, and uh, you know, there are uh, some of my neighbors do have children and this and that. So, no, I, 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 there's nothing that can be done with the 10, 15 feet of, uh, between the property lines. So that, that wasn't my issue. It's mainly, mainly privacy and uh, basically safety. Yeah, when, 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 I, when I was there the other day, I, I did notice you'd have a, a quite, the, quite, quite the role of arborbites that are growing there. 
Um, you, you guys both seem to be well shielded be between the between the, the well, two property lines. Well, yes, I'll, I, I don't want to. I didn't want to bring that up, but uh, 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 yes, we built the we put those trees up long ago. Mm -hmm. They took uh, 12, 15 years to grow 20, 30 feet. Uh, when Mr. Ryan first moved in, uh, we had her through the grapevine that they were, that he thought they were ugly and wanted to cut them down. Until I went over and knocked on his door, nobody answered. I then uh, knocked on the uh, in-law suite and the an elderly woman answered with a pit bull. Okay, and I said, those are our trees and that we had the property surveyed before, uh, you know, before we move in. Every time we buy a house, we survey it, uh, have the uh, land survey the property and put in the surveyor stakes. So that was that. And then uh, uh, a couple of weeks later, I saw Mr. Ryan had uh, uh, hired a surveyor, which is great. And I actually talked to his surveyor and uh, his, his surveyor knew my surveyor and he saw where his surveyor stakes. So those trees were put there as a, uh, for a reason for the pri privacy issue so that we would not see 32 and 34 because they were close to our house. Uh, this has uh, not to deal with Mr. Ryan, but the previous owner, those were built, mm -hmm. those, these trees were planted uh, when the previous owner lived there. Yeah, so 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 the trees are still there, and, and I, I don't think there's any intention of moving them or doing anything to them. And as you stated, they are your trees, so I think Mr. Ryan is well aware of that. And so so I, I don't see the the the, the connection between um, the apartment make meeting the requirement of the bylaw and 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 the, and the privacy tree. I have a question. Uh, this is my this wife. Is, this is me, Nicola. I have a question. Will the measurements that you made? And with the with the uh, of the two dwellings be made publicly available. It's it's in my file in the office. So if you want to see, I'm be more than willing to share it with you. I, I would like to see it. I would sure. like to copy. I, I I agree with my wife there. Uh, that's a good point, Nina. That I would like to see the measurements, and I can therefore <coughs> then have a source to confirm to confirm the measurements. With original dwelling, I know Mark. Rhodes, I know Mark Rhodes very carefully, very well. Mr. Skiles, um, you have the address of the ZBA. Um, okay. it, it's very similar for the building inspector, but I'm sure Leanne could send you a copy of the letter that we have for this hearing that gives the measurements. Could you not, okay. Leanne? Yes, I could. I no. don't just want a copy of what the measurements are. I want to see the drawing and the measurements and how the measurements are made. That's what I want to see. Well, we and don't have that. that don't... Like, like, the, like the squares of the rooms and the measurements and how, how all of that is calculated. So that we have, well, an, I, so, 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 so that so, we so. have an understanding of what's, what, what the laws are and what is allowed and what is not allowed. Well, that, that was my purpose so that, of going over and spending an hour and a half there was to measure everything and to come up with a percentage of where Mr. Ryan is at with his, with his apartment and I'm the, uh, sorry. the house. That's part of the job. You have yeah, to- Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not saying I'm, I'm complaining sorry. that please, I did please, it. I'm just letting you know that I did it. Oh, and, and, oh, and, and, oh, and, oh, I want to know what the law, oh, what, what oh, it is. We were told oh, a lot of things that turned out to change. Oh, so I would like oh, to know and see in writing and have a written record of it. That's all I'm asking for. I, I'm not asking for anything other than that. I don't I mean, mean to interrupt here, but there that. is. I mean, we're recording. Everything is session. public record because the house okay, was for I sale. Want to see, I would like a copy. I'll be able to see all I can measurements. Get a copy and keep it in my files. All right. My wife and I are both scientists with PhDs, and we like things precise, not generalities. Precise science is what precise, preciseness in terms of biological activities, etc., and mathematics. Okay, and that's what we're asking for. We don't want any generalities. We want specifics, measurements, and Ms. Garnella. What? Dr. Ganella, please. I'm, I'm sorry. I would like I would like 
the drawings with the specific measurements available. That's all I'm asking for. I'm not disputing anything. You can vote and say that everything is fine. I just want to see it all in writing. That's all. All in writing with the measurements. So that's that's simply what I'm asking for. Nothing more, nothing less. Yes, uh, basically, so we can uh, uh, verify it again, uh, uh, doing anything, whether it's law, science, or whatever, or this. Uh, what's the problem of veri uh, uh, verification of the numbers? Well, I, I think it would be fairly easy for Mr. Hanks to give you square footage per housing level. In other words, what square footage would be in the basement, what square footage would be on the first floor. Is that correct, Mr. Hanks? That is, yes. Would okay. that be acceptable to you, um, Ms. Uh, Gonella? I would like to see the drawings with the square footage. I deal with lots of, of um, building assessments in the work that I do and siting of instruments, et cetera. And we have drawings, we have blueprints, we have drawings showing how much square feet, what the length and the width of each room are. That's all I'm asking for. I don't have a layout of the house. Those types of things are available on the internet. It, it, you, you can see them. Um, you, you've, you've made measurements. All I want to do is have a copy. All I'm asking for is a copy of what those measurements are. I think I'm not in there taking measurements. I'm not measuring that. You went and did that. You said you you have. I I would just like to see what what that is. I want it in writing. Well, may I, I see it? May I suggest to you that your house and um, 3234 were built as part of a subdivision. And there were plans um, developed and approved by the planning board. Might I suggest to you that um, you get those plans from the planning board and ask Mr. Mm -hmm. Hanks to tell you what the square footage he came up with on each level. Well, I would think that would be your responsibility. I don't understand uh, uh, why this is an issue, really. Uh, uh, how difficult. When you buy a house, you get the plans. You get the square footage. And this should be in the deed. How easy is it to get a deed uh, with the, uh, the drawing of the floor, of the, of the floor plan of the first and four, or second floor of 32 and 34? Why is this an issue? That's what we have when we bought this house. And, or uh, go to Mark Rhodes, who built the house, both at 32 and 34, and, and ask him. Well, let, it, let me just express what our responsibility is as a board. Our responsibility is to see that the petitioner has met the criteria for an in-law apartment. And in that process, we rely on the expertise of the building commissioner. So the building commissioner has supplied us with um, a document that tells us that so long as, I think it's 252 feet of the basement would be the only thing that could be um, uh, built. Is that correct, Mr. Hanks? It is, yes. So the, the calculations that I came up with is that right now he's at 29% ratio and that would allow him to do an initial 252 feet in the basement should he still plan on doing that. So now again, back to the plans. That there, it's, it's not a secret. Um, and plan you know, your house plans are not recorded on your deed. You can look up your own deed. You can go on the mass land records and look up anybody's deed if you like. A, a, a deed is going to give you your meets and bounds describing your, your property, not your house plan. If you like a copy of his plan, I would gladly send you what the original building permit plan is on the file. And whether or not the house is built that exact plan, I do not know. And I did not go room to room. We measured general area to come up 
you know, I didn't go each room and say, this room's 12 by 12. We took chunks and measured it. And I think I was pretty accurate as to what my total number came up to. So again, it's just not secretive and I would gladly share it with you and I would gladly let you look at the file and I'll gladly take a picture and send you the blueprints of the original house. So th there's, there's no secret to this at all and I'm more than glad to share it with you. Yes, uh, I just have one, uh, again, I, I may have missed it a little bit. So uh, uh, Mr. Hanks, uh, you're the building commissioner for what town or? For the town of Berlin. You're the so so you're independent. You're not working with the uh, Mr. Ryan at all. Oh God, no! I I, I am I am okay. duly that's, appointed that's, by that's, the town of Berlin by the board of selectmen. I am the building commission zoning enforcement officer for the town. I represent the town, not any in, s specific individual. Okay, that's good. I'm I'm okay with it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Does anyone on the board have any questions of Mr. Hanks or Mr. Ryan? You realize, Mr. Ryan, should the board choose to approve the in-law apartment, um, that it will be you know, stipulated that it has to be the 35%, that you can't have more than three people living there, um, at least one of whom must be related to you, or in this case, to your wife, because I'm assuming the house is in both of your names. Yes. Um, it is. And that they have to meet all other town regulations as far as um, Board of Health, conservation, um, and the list of multitudes. Um, and it will be restricted for five years. Mr. Ryan will have to come back in five years and renew his permit. And at that time, um, we will go through the same scrutiny as to who is living there at that time. Does anyone else have any other questions? I have one. Okay. Um, forgive me if it's already been discussed, uh, but the in-law apartment is a three bedroom. How many bedrooms are in the main residence? Four bedrooms. Four, okay. Do you uh, share a well and a septic system? Those are the only things being shared, yes. Everything else is independent. So the system apparently is the septic is capable of a seven bedroom. Yes, and that is actually on the deed. Seven bedroom deed restriction is filed with the Worcester County Registry of Deeds. Okay. And I assume the well is in good shape. <clears throat> yes, been inspected, high quality water. Jenny, okay. Jenny, that deed restriction for the seven bedroom septic system was put in place in September of 2020. Are the and, uh, I, let me look. Yes, I believe Bill Broken from the Shovel Board of Health requested that be put on a deed. Yeah, I'm looking to see who signed it. Uh, do, do, do. It is signed by Patrick Ryan and Holly Ryan. Um, it would be a matter of checking with Board of Health, I assume, to make sure it went through their approval. I can, I can attest to that, that it did, because I, I, I remember when, uh, Bill Brookings asked Mr. Um, Ryan to put that on there. Okay. Okay, if no one has any further questions, I'll entertain a motion. I, I, I just have a, a one just uh, last comment again. Yes, I, I, we kind of expressed it already. I, I, I would, I want to make it, I want to have some type of insurance 
that this is not going to eventually become a single home dwelling. And that's our major concern of myself and my wife. Because uh, again, Mr. Ryan at the previous meeting kept going on how he wouldn't have bought the property if he knew he wasn't buying two houses, two properties, and he could do what he wanted. So that's our major concern that uh, and somehow five years from now, six years from now, that property will be subdivided into uh, a single home uh, property. And, and and that's, and that's our major concern. Mr. Hanks may address this, but under our current bylaw, a, no multiple family dwellings are allowed in your district. That that is correct. No, no, nor could he subdivide that and break that off as a separate lot with a similar as a separate dwelling unit. You only allow one principal dwelling unit per lot, but you are allowed the in-law apartment, which is what he's applying for today. And you made a very good point. The current bylaw, things can change. Well, that would have to go to town meeting, and that would have to be majority of of, of the attendees at town meeting to First, change a bylaw. But it can change. Well, yeah, it, it could change. It could, it, it could get more stringent, too. It could go it either way. Mm -hmm. Is there anything Madam else? Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, approve the permit for a in-law apartment with the standard uh, stipulations for 35% and three people maximum occupancy uh, for a period of five years uh, be approved. Okay. Who did the seconding? Dennis. Is there any other um, input before we uh, do our roll call vote? Pat? Yeah. Uh, Danny? Aye. Jenny? Aye. Jim. Aye. Susanna. Aye. And myself, I'm an I. You will receive, um, Mr. Ryan, and your abutters will receive shortly. I'm old and I'm slow. It'll probably take a couple of weeks. Plus, we need signatures from folks um, to have um the decision written and prepared and then the town clerk will mail a copy to all of the abutters that are listed on the petition okay thank you we'll see you in five years all right <laughs> we'll do okay um i think we're all set here so we could close this hearing could we would someone care to move to close the hearing? So moved. Second. So that's Ginny and Jim. Yes. Um, any further discussion or questions? Absolutely not. Uh, Susanna. Yes. Jenny. Aye. Pat. Yes. Ginny. Aye. Jim. And I Aye. almost was going to have Mr. Hanks vote because he's becoming a regular. <laughs> I, I want to thank you for your participation this evening. It was most helpful. You're welcome. I apologize for not tuning in sooner. I, I kind of spaced out and forgot about it. And I, my phone ding was, it wasn't from anybody from you guys, but, I, but now it's like Don, I'm like, oh my God, there's a ZBA meeting tonight. So I, I probably missed all the good stuff, right? There's a meeting here tonight. Yes. Yeah, and so, Rick I, I just want to say thank you for explaining the Registry of Deeds better than I ever could. You're more than welcome. Uh, okay, I'll call. We've done all of our uh, other business, have we, Leanne? We have. I'll make a motion to close the meeting. Before we do that, I do have one other thing that uh, it's, it's more of a question for us to ponder over for future. Okay. But, um, this 35% issue. Um, we have approved numerous in-law apartments over the last couple of years uh, since that was added to the town bylaw. Um, now we've changed or 
in the process of changing how that 35% is calculated. So what happens when we have someone in the future who comes back for a reapproval on one that we've previously approved and we find out that it no longer meets the 35% requirement? Well, you have a very interesting question there. Uh, would, 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 they, would they be grandfather protected? Because that was, they, they were in ex existence prior to the change? Well, the, the current way, well, what was approved at, at town meeting didn't provide any means of grandfather. Hmm. So my concern is that maybe we need to have that added to the bylaw, some I, way I, of, I, of I, saying I, that the, the ones that were approved in that period um, you know, the last four years or whatever, um, up until this change uh, becomes effective, if when they come up for renewal, would automatically be yeah. grandfathered into thirty-five percent portion. Right. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a very very good valid point that maybe we need to get that back to uh, Tim Wheel and the Planning Board to, to take a look at that for uh, an upcoming town meeting because. You're right. Um, I'm, I'm just thinking some of the ones in the last couple of years, they were, you know, I know they, um, a couple of new houses like on Pollard, one of the new houses on Pollard that they did an in-law, they actually had to finish a little bit of basement space just to make the ratio come out correctly. And under the new way of looking at it, it, it might not calc out the same, just, just, just as you just mentioned that um, the way you figure it is, is a, different, a different means of getting there. So yeah, may, maybe uh, you know prior to 2022, you could use the old formula. I don't, I don't know what, what language it should be, but that's that's very valid. Either that, or they need to put something in the bylaw that says if an existing mm. um, uh, in-law apartment exceeds the 35 percent because of the change in the method of calculation, that it would be considered pre-existing non-conforming. Right. Yep. Yeah. Which yeah, is exactly. probably the best route to go. Right. Because when you renew it right now, as Jim says, it has to meet the 35 in order to be approved. But we want, might want to make it that if for some reason, and only due to the change in calculation, that it didn't meet the 35. Yeah. I think you're going to find the chances are they're going to because I think you're going to find in the house there were more hallways and bathrooms and things that were excluded in the past that now will be included in the overall size of the house. Do you know what I mean, uh, Rich? Yeah. Yeah. Um, stairways and all that. You didn't. You don't necessarily have those or as many of those in an in-law apartment. Yeah, that, so, that's that, that, that's correct. Because typically the, the the main house, the massive massive bedroom is going to be have a larger closet that gets excluded. It's going to have a larger bathroom that gets excluded. A lot hallway. of times, like, hallways, it, correct. And usually the apartments yeah, there as efficient as possible. They don't have those things. They get minus start the equation. But it it's something that maybe um, Susanna and I can take to the planning board and just ask them what they think is going to happen. Yeah. Right, Susanna. Well, well, yeah, and you're also bringing up the question of every five years, do we have to recalculate to make sure it is still within the 35 percent? Because, uh, I mean, chances are the 35 percent will actually drop because most people add on to their house and not their in-law. But is it something where if we're going to have to keep reapproving an in-law apartment? Do we have to keep recalculating to make sure it's under thirty-five uh, percent? I, I would hope the better question would be: Has has any anything changed in the size? And if they say no, then keep moving. You know, what I'm saying if 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 if, if they met the requirement at the time and they haven't made any modifications of the house department, then I, I don't want to go measure everybody's house every five years. No, to. I know that's why I'm asking. <laughs> and it would be obviously it would be honor system at that point, right? The assessors uh, measured our house. Is that something they do when there's a re-evaluation or can the assessors be involved in measuring? This is exterior, of course. 
Right. They they'll they'll go around and they'll measure the exterior, and that and, that, and that's where Mr. Ryan's numbers came a, quite a skewed. Is that um, he has a very complicated house, a beautiful house, and everything, but. I, th I think ease of measuring, they, they just kind of walked around measured and they just multiplied times the number of floors, but they didn't back out garages and stuff like that because they have a drive on the garages. So I think for simplicity and just to get something on the card, they, you know, you know, Mr. Ryan was correct when he was saying that, you know, by the assessor's card, the apartment was huge, but I, I questioned it because the time I went over there, I'm like, there's no way that house um, an apartment are close to the same size. The house is a lot larger than the apartment was, and 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 um, you know, and the math proved that 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 it wasn't. It was it was just the way it, you know. And it was it was kind of interesting because we look at the assessor's card, and we, we're, we're looking at what the assessor had for numbers on there, and then we started measuring some of the rooms. Like, well, they're off. They, they they gave it a couple of feet too many on this one, and a couple of feet too many on that one, and so, so it, again, it, his numbers dropped drastically from what the assessor shows it as for a square footage. Okay, so that wouldn't be helpful. Is there a garage at 32? Yeah, to drive on the garage. Oh, okay. Is there also one at 34? Yeah, three bay garage. So 32 has a two bay garage and 34 has a three bay garage. Wow. Mm. But it's but just they, something for Tim Wheeler and company to kick around. They need to figure that out, how they want to do that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think we should just give them a heads up that that could be something in the future. And I don't see any reason why it wouldn't make sense to put in the bylaw that if there's been no change in the size of the house or the apartment, but by measurement only, using the old method and the new method, it now comes up over 35 that it would be pre-existing on conforming in other words, grandfather. Right. I think yeah. That's yeah. You know, I have to say one thing that surprised me was a three bedroom in an in-law apartment. That's a small house. And I, it just surprised me. Just my comment. Well, it surprised me that um, an in-law apartment is supposed to have its own entrance, but it's not, it's supposed to be, look like a single family house. Well, that house pretty much looks like two houses. Well, but unfortunately we can't erase the past of what was built, <laughs> you know, so. You know, but but what what we all look at by today's standard is not what what he has. But you know, again, he didn't build it. He didn't have it built. He bought what what was there, and he's just trying to utilize it by for, for what was there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah, you're right. You pull in there, and it's like, wow, that, that you know, that is a bigger bigger in law apartment. But I, I guess when you're going by that 35 percentile, you know, if someone needs more space, well, and I guess in his case, he's what do you say? Is uh, I didn't catch the whole thing, but it's going to be. Sister Laura and two children live in there, I think. Is that what he said? Yes. That's something right. that effect. So well, you know, Richard, it's... um, how many square feet are the final tally of the in-law apartment? Uh, I they... don't have that. I don't have that with me, but I think it was um, I'm thinking the house was the house was 40... 4250 and the apartment is 1235. Yeah. Oh, okay. And that's it's after, it and that's bigger. including the two twenty five, right? No, the the, the yeah. two twenty five would get added into that later. Um, it, it it does look a lot bigger because when you approach it, it's got that two bay garage underneath that you drive into, so that just gives it a more of a feel of grandeur when you pull up to it. It just looks bigger, but when you get into the unit itself, it, it's it's not as big as it looks from the outside, and it's you know it's spread over two floors because he's got um. There's a bedroom on the second floor and a, and a full bath on the second floor. So the, the way you compute the 35%, if you add the 225 to the 1235, no. and then add that to the 4250, 
the total area of the house is 5710 or will be, right? I'd have to agree with you. I don't have the numbers in front of me. I'm sure I'm sure you're accurate. So I'm just saying it'd be 30% to make, well, it would be three point what three three yeah. are you using your abacus no <laughs> do you have i'm just saying that it would we could of that 57 percent what is 35 percent to 57 10 who's got a calculator handy hang on I'm just going through the exercise so we know how the calculation is made. 35% of 5,700 is 1,995. I get 1,998. Well, I round, I rounded off. I did 5,700 because I didn't hear the whole number. Oh, okay. I had 5,710. Do 5710 because it would make a difference. 1998. Oops. <clears throat> you see the issue? Um, <clears throat> we're going to have 10, 1, 6, 4, 1. So he's really pretty well under that. That's what I was wondering is how you compute. The way I read the bylaw, you take the total square footage or square floor area or whatever of the entire house, including the in-law apartment. And then you take 35% of that and the in-law apartment has to be 35%. Is that the way you do it, Rich? I don't think so. That's not no, that, that, that's, that, that's how we did it in Townsend, but I think you guys are just flat 35% of the house. Yeah, isn't it thirty five percent of the main house? Yeah, it that's how it should be calculated. That, well, that's how it's worded. Yeah. It is not. It is not of the total area. Well, I don't know. What do you call the dwelling? Is the dwelling the in law plus the house, or is the dwelling just the main residence? We're looking at five twelve, aren't we, Susanna? Yes, we are. An in law apartment shall comprise no more than thirty five percent of the dwelling's total floor area. And that's the question. By dwelling, do you mean the primary residence or do you mean- The entire the, residence. The entire wow. building. Oh, added together. This but, is another question for the planning board, I believe. But if, if you're just building a house and you wanna build an in-law, the in-law isn't already there. So how can you include the square footage of that dwelling if it doesn't exist yet? Because it's on the plan. So pretend you have a regular three bedroom house. There's no in-law apartment. Right. And it's 4,000 It's four thousand square foot house. And you're allowed to take 35% of that and make it into an in-law apartment. Right. Does that make more sense? Well, does that comply with the definition that's on page 106? Mm. <laughs> what's, what's the definition on 106? Oh, so yeah. the definition is for a dwelling is any building or part thereof used in a whole or in part for continuous or permanent habitation for one or more persons, but not including trailer, mobile homes, over mounted or commercial accommodation, for transient occupancy, each dwelling to have one or more rooms with cooking, living, sanitary, and sleeping facilities arranged for the continuous or permanent use of one or more individuals living together as a single housekeeping unit as contrasted to a group living together such as a club. Well, I so think we could debate this all night, but I think what we're <laughs> coming up with um, Rich, is um, we need to know, I think we don't have a problem with this being under, you know, no matter how it's calculated, because if we're coming up with 
1998 or under 2000 for the square footage. No, but you're coming up with 1460. Yeah, I, yes, I, I took 35% of the of the dwelling unit, not not to combine. And again, when, when, when I was in Townsend, it specifically said you took the apartment and the dwelling, you added them together and took 35% of that number. You, your bylaw doesn't have that language of, specifically have that language of saying you add them together and then take 35%. So you're saying it can only be 35% of the primary dwelling? Well, I, I think it's, it's what the consensus is going to be. Is, is, um, I could be interpreting it incorrectly. Oh, I don't know what the, well, all I'm trying to figure out is what the interpretation should be. Most of the in-law apartments that we've run into in the past have been in existing homes. Okay. Um, and in an existing home, you would say that it could only take up 13, 35% of the floor area in the home. So I think what we've come up with is two questions for the planning board. Okay. What happens if the calculations come up differently if we use the old method or the new method? Quite frankly, I think we're going to find that the new method um, is probably going to provide a larger in-law than the old method, but only time will tell. And the second question is, when you're doing a house like this, what is meant by the bylaw? Does it need defining is the planning board intent to be 35% of the total floor area of both units or 35% of the primary unit? Because it comes out different. Drastically different. Yes. Okay, I don't think we're going to resolve that. I think I'll entertain a motion unless someone else has something. Uh, if we have some things um, to talk about the fair um, or whatever, um, we can do it after. But uh, are we, um, anyone want to make a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Is there a second? Yes. Second. Um, okay, I'll go around with roll call. Jim? Aye. Jenny? Aye. Pat is away from her machine. Jenny? Aye. Susanna? Aye. And I'm an aye.